Well, you know, everybody's complaining about LeBron James' performance against Boston last night, and you know what? <laughs> I guess he, it looks like he did take a day off. He wasn't aggressive. He wasn't typical LeBron. He was missing shots. I'm starting to wonder if the elbow is worse than what it really what, what they're saying it is, because he, he just looked out of character, he looked out of sorts for him. He's a competitor, great player, and, and uh, he still. Let's keep in mind he's still a really young guy, and so and that after game that post game press conference, I don't think he said things that uh, made the fans feel any better because uh, some of the fans were a little upset with him. I mean, he said he alluded to the fact that they were spoiled seeing him play the way he does, and uh, that might not have been the right thing to say because Cleveland, you know, as a sports town, is not spoiled in anything because they haven't <laughs> won anything lately. But they're spoiled because getting to see LeBron James. Yeah, well, you know, I understand that. The second that. best player in the NBA. I, I understand all that, but but um, I'm thinking that, that that elbow is worse than what we think. What do you say? You know, or I should I say, what say you? What say I? The official decree for from King James. You know, this series, a lot of people want to make it about uh, Rondo versus James or Paul Pierce, or and you can make it about a number of factors, but really, isn't this Mike Brown just getting schooled with more talent by Doc Rivers, by this team playing harder for Doc Rivers, Doc Rivers knowing how to match up his players extremely well, because, you know... Well, I don't know if you can blame it on Mike Brown, because, I mean, Mike Brown has been been to the show. This is not his first rodeo. I mean, he's And, and his... he's lost all the rodeos before that. He's exactly. been out-coached in the playoffs before. Well, you know, he's he's uh, he's gotten his team to, to where they could go, even without... He didn't have the luxury of having Antoine Jameson and Shaq last time around. No, so. no, but he's got more talent. He's got the ta more talented team here, clearly. But the way that Rondo's being used right now, the way that... The, their defense is working. I, I think Doc Rivers deserves so much credit for for what the Celtics. Well, let's remember Celtics. Doc Rivers was a great ball player. He wasn't he was, a slouch, oh, so no, he, he's not a he slouch. knows what he's doing. He know, oh, he knows what he's doing, and he's totally went out coaching him. As for LeBron, you know what? If he wants to test the free agent waters, go ahead and let him test the free agent waters. He's earned that. You know, he's done so much for Cleveland. Right. And if if they can't win, and he wants to go and win a championship, I mean, it's let it be. You had great years with him. That's what I think. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting now because free agency is coming up, and uh, all of a sudden this starts to happen. Uh, the fans got to be careful not to make him feel unwanted because, I mean, nobody wants to be somewhere where they feel unwanted. So this is this is an awkward time right now for them. I mean, to be down, they're one loss away from going home, and let's see what, what happens. You know, the Celtics are thinking, hey, there's not going to be a game seven. We're going to finish this thing at six. And that's how you have to think yeah. when you're playing that kind of game because you don't want it to come back. But um, and if, if Cleveland is not able to, to uh, sustain this thing and, and get some new life, it's going to be interesting to see what the offseason yields for LeBron James. I think he might walk. I think he might end up playing somewhere else. And, there, and, and it's going to be an interesting free, season, uh, free agent market anyway because, you know, you think about Dwayne Wade maybe going somewhere else and, you know, uh, who, who knows who's going to be where, you know, who's going to, somebody might land in Chicago to help uh, Derrick Rose, you know, so, I mean, it's just, it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out at the end, even past the NBA playoffs. You know, speaking of the best sport in the, the did you see what happened in the NFL oh, today? Brian Cushing, okay, Brian Cushing, Houston Texans, getting the revote, rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year twice, no one has ever done that, huh, but it's just crazy <laughs> because of the steroid issue. Um, I think people have pretty much accepted that some football players take performance enhancers. I mean, this is a violent game. They're going to super fast, uh, knocking each other around. And uh, if you just want to survive in that game, sometimes maybe people resort to that. I'm not saying you should because I would never do that. I, I just don't think you should. I don't care how much money is involved because what are you doing to your body in the long run? And, it, you know, people could deny, deny, deny all they want. But when we see people start to deteriorate later, have all these ailments, uncharacteristic problems with their health and stuff like that, then we know, oh, hey, well, maybe he was doing the juice when he was playing. It's just, it's just not worth it, man. I don't care how much money is involved. It is not worth it to break your body down and to be an 80-year-old man when you're really 40. I just don't <laughs> think, I'm, you know, I'm serious. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, first of all, shame on the 18 writers in the Associated Press who still voted for him. I, that that's wrong. You, I mean, it, it's a pre, you know people can say that you accept that somebody takes steroids or they accept that people take steroids. Yeah. When you take steroids and you excel to the top, 
and then you re-vote and say, you know, it is okay that you took steroids. You were still the best player. That I don't, I don't buy that argument at all. Other thing you need to say is that Brian Cushing was juiced on the best Houston Texans season in their history of their ball club. Right. That was the only time they've ever got nine wins. And if this, this is just unacceptable that, that they got the test at the beginning of the season. They didn't suspend him then. All these retroactive suspensions, this is something they're going to need to fix in the CBA, and I think they will fix when they go uh, the NFL. All these, these players are getting way too protected in a yeah. lot of issues that they don't, they don't deserve protection. If you break the rules in the NFL, you don't deserve protection. And for people Plain who don't simple. know what you mean when you say CBA, he's talking about collective bargaining agreement for all you guys who don't know. It, it's when <sighs> rich owners yell at rich players how they get your money. So, you know... The fans just sit at home like, please don't have a lockout because, you know, we're spending all this money on jerseys and everything. I know the minutes are racking up and we're almost out of time here. I want to make one more point. Uh, okay, we're just going to start a steroid league called Juiced. That's going to be the Juiced League. And it's going to be uh, all these guys doing enormous amounts of steroids. Heads three times bigger than what they should be. I'm just playing. I'm going to be the poster boy. You know why? <laughs> why? Because I'm going to be a left tackle in that league. Devin is going to morph from his standard 110 to 280, <laughs> and he's going to be a tackle. I'll okay. see you later.